Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I wanted to remind you, Flare Naming Service is one of my uh, sponsors and they're leading up to their launch. They've got their, this is for .flr uh, domain names, payment pointers, and they're going to do their early, they're doing their early launch reservation. I, that, this is what I did. I, it's a $10 reservation so that you can have access to getting a shout out the premium domains that they, they're going to have when they, when they launch. Public launch dates May 27th. If you don't want to do that, you can you can uh, just get a free newsletter and, and be notified of the actual launch. But the people that do the ten dollars, they're going to have a shot at you know the the ones like maybe business .flr, some of the major names. Um, the link to this will be in the top of the description of this video. Um, now I we have set a record here on the Digital Asset Investor channel or the Digital Asset Investor Twitter handle. Um, this video that I put out the other day, this let's say you hold 300K, this was with um, Jake Claver. This this was the, is the fastest, most viewed vo video in the shortest amount of time I've ever put up, I'm pretty sure. 106,000 times, so it is worth you hearing again. And I wanna, I wanna tell you, it's on the topic of of um, creating you know LLCs and trusts for XRP. So because of the popularity of this, there's obviously a demand to on this topic. And so what I'm going to do is first of all, I'm going to be looking into this uh, for myself. When I find the correct way to go about this, I'm going to find who does this kind of stuff and who does it, um, who who the the right person is to do this kind of stuff. And then I'm going to let you know. Watch Somebody this. Somebody that holds a, a substantial amount of XRP, what, and what that might mean, whatever it means to you. Um, if so, I'll, I'll look at it this way. Here in the U.S., there's a gift tax threshold of 12.92 million per individual. If you're married, that's 25.84 million dollars. And when you move your assets into an estate, there's an estate tax or gift tax that'll be on that for any over that amount. So let's say you've got 300,000 XRP. Just as an example, a uh, hypothetical goes to $100, okay? You're looking at $30 million. At that point, when you move that into an estate in order to protect yourself and, and set things up for the future, you're gonna be looking at a 40% tax on anything above the amounts I mentioned before. Whether you're single or married, you're still gonna owe 40% tax, whether you cash out or not. And so that's a consideration you want to take in um, and make sure you're being proactive about. Um, it would be ideal if you could set those structured up beforehand, before you reach those amounts so that you don't incur those tax penalties. Um, and then once it was inside those vehicles, um, whether it be you know a holding company that's structured inside of an LLC, or I'm sorry, inside of a trust, um, or if you wanted to lease your assets from your holding company inside your trust to another entity so that it could you know, do whatever it was gonna do with those assets in order to produce income and pay you, make distributions out of the trust or from that company to you as an employee. Um, there's a lot of different ways to, get, ways to go about it in order to mitigate tax obligations. Uh, but the largest consideration in the short term for people I think is that gift tax for when they do move this into an estate. There you go. Uh, so we're going to look further into that. And I saw this for eGrag Crypto. This thing's going around where you type in your um, your username on Twitter and it tells you who's who's going to view your profile and all that. And uh, I thought it was interesting that Ripple's number two. So obviously the uh, XR pri XRP price is interesting to everyone. Um, check this from Dark Defender. Hi there all. Based on the previous wave trend, we discussed wave three lately after green indication. We had the following, 720 times in 2017, 62 in 2021, XXX in 2023. Um, look at this. 
$10x, $3.33. A 100x, $33.30. A 1,000x, $333. And he's just showing you what, what, was, what happened in the past. I don't think there's any telling where this thing goes if, if all the, the pieces fall uh, the way they should. Watch this. Hey guys, last week the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett, was on TV with good news, saying the bank crisis is over, we're out of the woods, your money is safe, because the government will bail everything out. Well, he said backstop, because he's friends with the guys doing the bailouts. And so for the low, low price of 10 trillion in backstop, we could get a pause in bank runs, at least the big ones. Everything has been bailed out ahead of time. The bad news is that's because all that money was converted into a coordinated attack on the US dollar. How? Because that 10 trillion plus comes directly from dollar holders. Some of it from potentially forced withdrawals from your bank account, the rest of it from fresh inflation to pay for it all. Meaning anybody who owns a US dollar is now at risk. The timing is not ideal given that there's already worldwide momentum in dozens of formerly friendly countries to move off the dollar and switch either to their own currencies or to some China-led alternative. The attraction of China, by the way, is that, as Larry Summers put it, our activist-led foreign policy means, quote, China gives us an airport, America gives us a lecture. So yes, it's entirely possible that 10 trillion will end the bank runs, at least the ones that make the headlines, and all we had to do was give up the US dollar. So first a brief review. In the old days when a bank screwed up, its assets would fall below its deposits and it was game over. It had to call the FDIC for an uncomfortable conversation and a takeover. The regular depositors, widows and orphans, they got covered by the FDIC insurance and rich people were out of luck. They should have known better. But that's- Okay, I just wanted to see some of that about the hidden bailouts. Um, now, check this out. John Deaton, XRP not being listed in Ripple's liquidity hub means absolutely nothing regarding the case. It does not mean the case has already been decided and Ripple lost or they suspect bad news is coming. It's called liquidity hub. How liquid is XRP in the U.S.? Now, uh, John is having a, um, I think he's doing a spaces on this later today. He says, don't get wrong. I understand people's disappointment. You've been fighting the, for XRP over two years against the government overage. I'm just commenting on people thinking that it means something specific to the case itself. I agree. Now, check this out. Ashley Prosper has been doing some really good tweets lately. XRP community, if Judge Torres interprets the law as the law is written, then the SEC must lose this case. That's kind of where I've been at for, for a while because the oranges and Howie were not, these are facts. The oranges in Howie were not securities, okay? So they, she cannot, following the law, call XRP a security. She cannot, it, never in the history of the United States have they said secondary market sales are securities, according to Ripple's lawyers. She cannot call XRP in the secondary, mar in the secondary market a security if she follows the law. Can't do it. So the only question really becomes is, will she, like she should, will sh she rule on those two things? And then anything else can go, whatever, to trial or to appeal, whatever. But those two things, to me, are a win for us. And um, it, it, it really does give uh, Gary a uh, wallet. Now check this out. This is um, from 801XRP. Watch this. Yeah. So, so especially what we are doing now with the Interwork Alliance and that we are basically uh, like building a solu solution according to, to the standards set by Interwork and that we collaborate with each other to set standards and have blockchain technology as like an audit accounting tool uh, mm -hmm. that that's the most, yeah, uh, that will, the blockchain has the most added value as an accounting uh, like um, tool basically for us as well. It uh, provides transparency in the market and that's why we're uh, uh, utilizing that technology in our uh, solutions as well because it uh, brings brings uh, yeah, transparency to the market basically. Ironically, and um, certainly in some circles, has a huge degree of mistrust um, as a technology. I mean, I, I'm still so surprised. Again, COP26, the only mention of 
blockchain as a uh, innovative solution in in sustainability was be- as you know the worst for the environment and the least clean. Um, what are your thoughts because on that? Bitcoin. Yeah. Why were you? Yeah, exactly. Because Bitcoin. Yeah. That, yeah. That's that why we we chosen to work uh, uh, build this on the XRP ledger instead. So we looked at uh, the right like a uh, way to 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 issue and 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 implement the token taxonomy framework on a, on a carbon neutral uh, blockchain so basically uh, it it's all depends on on which protocol you prefer and especially what uh, Sammy was mentioning yeah bitcoin is uh, uh, the, the biggest uh, polluter out there uh, but there are alternatives so there are alternatives there are nuances to even that um discussion and and you know uh-huh. They chose to use it, do it on the XRP ledger. Now look at this. This is Danielle Dixon from Stellar, and look what she's expecting. This came out of nowhere. We're here in Washington. I'm assuming you're having conversations around this. How optimistic are you on the regulatory front here in the U.S.? So I feel like we need to get something done here in the U.S. in order for us to really set the standard, if we want to set the standard, which I think the U.S. government is going to want to do that. So I'm very optimistic that we're going to get something on stable coins by the end of the year. And the reason why is because we don't have a choice. If we want to have a voice in this, we need to get it done this year. Okay. And just by coincidence, she thinks that. And then on on Friday, I believe, uh, no, Saturday, the House Financial Services Committee published a landmark stable coin bill Saturday, first major crypto legislation in 2023. It's almost like everybody was leading us to believe that we're never going to get anything for a long time, but then we get it. This guy clipped out this. <laughs> he says, oof, this is out of the bill, I guess. Oof for Tether and anyone who uses it in, in the U.S. Pro- prohibition on offers and sales. It shall be unlawful for any person to offer or sell a payment stable coin through the use of any medium or by any means of access in interstate commerce in the United States. Um, the board may issue regulations, pr- regulations providing safe harbors from this section that are consistent with the purposes. In other words, the way I read that is that is that the regulators will get to pick and choose which stable coins get to live and which ones get to die, is what, the way I read that. So for those of you that think, oh, I control my keys, they can't ban it or do this, here you go. That's what that says to me. Now... Check this out. This is Elon Musk. The degree to which uh, various government agencies had effectively had full access to everything that was going on on Twitter uh, blew my mind. Um, I was not aware of that. Would that include people's DMs? Uh, Yes. That is blatantly illegal. If they don't start putting the people behind these things in prison, we don't, this is not the United States of America anymore with like a constitution that matters and all that stuff. It's out the window because if they don't get put in prison for what they did, they will keep doing it. And then the, what's, what, why not do it? Get caught, nothing happens to you, then go do it again. Then you get caught again 15 years later, nothing happens, do it again. Somebody has to go, many, not some, many need to go to prison for that. Um, okay, in just 60 something words, SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce has managed to articulate all that hits awfully close to home. Look at this, this is Hester Pierce the other day. Today's commission tells entrepreneurs trying to do new things in our markets to come in and register. When the entrepreneurs find out they cannot, the commission dismisses the possibility of making practical adjustments to our registration framework to help entrepreneurs register and instead rewards their good faith with an enforcement action. Today's commission treats the notice and comment rulemaking process not as conversation, but as a threat. But here's the bigger thing. Like one of the two or three prongs of the SEC's whole mission, the whole reason for being is to help in the formation of capital. Gary Gensler is doing the exact opposite. And again, nobody's doing anything to him. Okay, and as long as no nobody's going to do anything to him, I keep complaining. All it is is the the supposed good guys. It's tweets, it's threats. They talk, they say they're going to do this, but it's no action. Meanwhile, Gary Gensler's doing action after action after action against the very investors that he's supposed to be protecting, and against the very businesses 
that are supposed to be forming capital in, in this country so that we can have innovation. So all he's doing is action, 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 but the supposed guys that are supposed to come to the rescue are talk, talk, talk. Well, that might just be changing. Warren Davidson tweeted this yesterday. Yep, to correct a long series of abuses, I'm introducing legislation that removes the chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission and replaces the role with an executive director that reports to the board where authority resides. Former chairs of the SEC are ineligible. This is a step in the direction of doing something right here. And everybody should be behind Ward and Davidson. And this is when John Deaton called it out back on, um, on uh, Charles Payne's show a while back. Oh, the notion that so many people want to see this succeed, again, whether you're an investor or not, I think speaks to the idea of freedom, of innovation, of self-determination. And there are a lot of powerful forces out there that don't want to see that happen. Absolutely. And what I think what's happening is that cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin is one of the few times in history where the individual kind of front run the, the industry, if you right. will, in the hedge funds. And personally, I think that Gensler's attack on crypto is to allow the hedge funds and the Wall Streeters to come in, crash the market. They come in and then By the way, they, they do that with the stock thing. market all the time, all the time. That's exactly what they're doing. And of course, the classic Tim Draper telling us what was going to happen. You can... You can just hear the bankers panicking right now. And then they all line up and they wrap their arms. Uh, more video has been deleted on Twitter. The sound has gotten cut. It's always on these clips that are so great, too. Um, all right, I'll finish there. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that this might be the most interesting action towards these bad guys that we've seen since this all started. So kudos to Warren Davidson. Thanks for